four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yes. That's amazing. I've got the same combination on my luggage. <laughs> Casting from the deep depths of cyberspace, this is Darn IT Podcast, Cybersecurity Made Simple, and I'm your host, Darling G, CEO of Darn IT Group. Episode 25, Top 3 Cybersecurity Myths. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. Now, I have an interesting episode today. There is a lot going on in cybersecurity. There's a lot of things you may have heard, um, something from the internet or from a friend, a colleague, manager, boss, friend, foe, whoever. But in today's society, especially with this ongoing global pandemic, you think about the millions of humans that are currently working from home it's about time that we challenge the misconception about cybersecurity. Now, before we get into this, I want you to understand that cybersecurity has evolved in the last five years, and it may not seem like a long time. However, a lot changes in the cybersecurity field in a matter of minutes. Now, specifically when it comes to small, medium companies, cybersecurity wasn't really top of mind for most businesses. Typically, they just operated their business, you know, pay their expenses, they pay their employees, rinse, repeat. Now, with the evolution of cybercrime, cyber threats, automation, AI, Everything has changed in the last five years significantly. Um, Now, it's not just about the fancy AI gimmicks and gadgets, but really it's the accessibility of technology with everybody. Most of us have more than one device. We have a laptop, a desktop, a cell phone, uh, maybe a tablet. So... As one person, we have multitude of devices. And as business owners, especially in the small, medium business landscape, uh, the same thing goes for their employees, etc. So everything seems to multiply. Now, I want you to take a second to think about this. And this is an example that I use quite frequently because it really highlights the fact that You know, not all of us are immune, and we'll tackle these myths in a moment. Think about a someone working for your organization. So if you're if you have a receptionist, for example, let's use this as an example. Say your receptionist sitting at your company, and there is a gentleman who walks in the door who looks a bit disheveled. And he says to you, Look, man. I'm here for my interview today and I'm having such a hard time. I'm a bit late, but I need to plug in. I need to, I need you to print this off for me if you wouldn't mind. It would mean the world to me. This guy doesn't seem like any stereotypical bad guy. Um, doesn't seem like someone, you know, you wouldn't trust. So in good faith, you said, okay, let me just print it, print it off. You plug the USB key into your computer you print to the printer that's by you, and then you give this disheveled person his resume and give him back his USB key. Now, think about this for a second. Now, I highlighted this, and you're thinking, oh, well, you know, this is bad, etc. But in a typical office environment, you would have not known better. Your staff would not know better. They thought they were helping people, and as human beings, we're trusting people in the beginning. Now, the reason I use this example and this story is because one of the biggest misconceptions that people have when it comes to cyber criminals 
is that they don't interact with them. And that's false. You have to understand that cybersecurity is multifaceted. You cannot think in, in, in some A to B sense. You must understand that cyber criminals will interact with you in the real world as well. Now let's get into the first myth. Myth number one. Cybersecurity slash IT team will protect me. Now I can tell you <laughs> many examples of times I've heard business leaders, employees say this to me on a constant basis. They arbitrarily assume that their security company or IT company will protect them. Now, understand that most employees are not technical and they would normally delegate that responsibility to someone else. And, and most of the time, and from what I've seen, and I'm speaking from experience too, is that they will do whatever they want and they essentially will have the IT team or the cybersecurity team to protect them. They just assume that these individuals or this team would protect them from all the cybercrime in the entire world. According to a 2018 survey by the, by the Fulman Institute, the inability to hire and retain expert staff is the number one reasons cybersecurity problems that are faced. So understand that having someone on staff is going to be a hard thing to retain because, again, speaking from experience here, having somebody who is able, who is knowledgeable and capable to have set in a retainer in your organization is close to be to being impossible because there's such a high demand for experts and professionals in this in these fields that it's hard to retain them. Now understand too with my previous example that human factors are the most serious vulnerabilities. So you th so think about it. Understand that that people yourself included, we're all human beings, and we're not perfect. No one is. When you empower your employees to be more cyber aware or to become cyber defenders at every level, then, only then, would you be in a better position than you were if you didn't or if you relied on a piece of technology or a security team to protect you. Now, understand that every level needs to understand this. And I want this to be highlighted because I have, I have done cybersecurity awareness trainings myself. And I can tell you from my experience that, for example, if I'm doing a cybersecurity awareness training for a group of 50 people, for example, and I would ask the either the CEO or managers, etc., if they're going to sit in there saying, "No, uh, we're too busy. We got all this stuff, appointments, etc., so forth." And I look at them for a second and I say, "This is this is not going to work." And they look at me dumbfounded and you know kind of offended, and say, "Why?" And I say to them that every single level from top to bottom of this organization needs to be trained and aware. Because you cannot expect this organization to stand tall in the event of a cyber attack if the upper management isn't fully aware and fully capable on how to handle these situations as they arise because time is of importance. So you cannot expect your team to react in such a way if you are fully incapable of responding appropriately. And most of the time, and I'm saying this quite honestly, most of the time they do understand and say, okay, let me sit in, in this and um, learn. Because they just assume that their people will protect them and they'll be fine and life will go on. Myth number two. IT pros are immune to cyber attacks. <laughs> and I laugh at this because... Really, 
I can tell you from experience again, um, from my endeavors of IT professionals sitting on their high horse. And, and I say this, I respect most professionals, but I respect the ones that are, are humble and can admit that we're all not perfect. And you'll never hear me say this, that I know everything and that I'm immune and I'm not. And I can proudly say that I have been fished before, not successfully, mind you, but clicking on a link and luckily something stopped it on my machine, but I received a link and again, multitasking and I clicked on a link. Now, someone coming from my, my profession, my field, you would assume that I would know everything and you couldn't get anything past me. So I want to debunk this myth because even though your IT professionals are well-trained, that is not all the protection they need from a cyber attack. Consider the fact that IT professionals fall, guilty, for social engineering attacks. Because the inherent problem is, is that typically speaking, IT professionals are overworked. They are multitasking. They're doing different things at once. So that email that make came, that comes in that says uh, this is a delivery or this is something that they were looking for, they can click on it. And typically speaking, most IT professionals are working out of a, a sort of an administrative background or process, which indeed could compromise their company. This is why I keep saying constant training across the company which is not which I'm not talking about annual compliance training because you got to think about it this way we're all humans this seems to be the common talk track here in this in this podcast but understanding that not all IT professionals are security professionals I'll say this again not all IT professionals are security professionals we all have our specialties. We're all good at some things and we're bad at some other things. We are not all jacks of the trade. So let me make this clear. If you have an employee who says that he or she is great in everything, is in security and IT, uh, question it and question it hard because they may not be aware of certain vulnerabilities, certain processes and technologies and procedures to protect your organization. So keep that in mind. But this constant training, again, like I said in, in the earlier myth, this training has to be done from top to bottom and bottom to top. Every single person, IT, HR, front desk, back desk, temporary employee, whoever, everyone needs some sort of training to avoid or mitigate some of these risks when it comes to cyber attacks and cyber criminals. A statistic here is 43% of victims involved small business victims. This is according to a Verizon 2019 breach report. So understand that a lot of small businesses do not have IT teams, IT professionals, or cybersecurity firms. They are the ones who are most vulnerable because they A, don't have the right protections in place, or B, have the right advice to make the proper procedures to protect themselves. So understand that a lot of resources do come in play that could hamper small businesses from having a proper cybersecurity stance. And like I say, it's all about the training and the awareness. You don't need top of the line solutions and products to protect you. Having them is great, but understanding how they work and the reasons why you need them are key in order to be cyber aware and to cyber secure your business. Myth number three, cyber attacks are only in cyberspace. Yes, this may be true to extent, but the earlier example in the beginning of this podcast, when I talked about that disheveled person coming in for an interview, I understand that physical security is also a crucial element in all cybersecurity platforms. So that example with that disheveled person plugging in that USB key, that the person at the front desk inadvertently allowed this criminal to inject the computer or to upload malware onto their computer 
and it could potentially spread across the entire network. This is why physical security is one of the most important things as well when it comes to cybersecurity. And again, the biggest myth is that this all originates from cyberspace. Now, how do these, how do these breaches happen? They can happen and be caused by, for example, uh, stolen laptops, uh, flash drives, any sort of physical infiltration to a company, big or small. These are real problems that could potentially happen. And they may not be as obvious as the first example. And you may think, well, this will never happen to me. To an extent, it is true. However, you never know the importance of having a proper physical security practice in place for your organization, which will protect you. So, for example, um, uh, not Petya in 2017 damaged critical infrastructure. A ship shipping company, Masric, only had one infected computer, one infected computer, which caused about 10 billion, with a B, in damages across the organization. Now, this is a big shipping company, and they had one computer that fell victim to this malware and cost them billions of dollars in, in damages for the, the company. So I want you to understand this. A few key takeaways from this podcast is a strong cybersecurity cannot be built on fancy words and myths alone. So that means don't really have uh, assumptions that you're cyber safe with a few myths that have probably been debunked by now. Cyber threats continue to defy our assumptions but the most destructive myth here is that cybersecurity is someone else's responsibility. And I can tell you from experience, again, that I hear that more times than you think. A lot of people like to delegate those responsibilities and don't like to take that responsibilities for themselves. And I hope if you're an avid listener to this podcast, you understand that we're all accountable. Everyone needs to be armed against cybercrime. This may seem be this may be a bit overwhelming to businesses, which is okay. But employees who are fully capable will discover how empowering it is to the entire organizations. And a lot of businesses who have empowered their employees have come out of the woodwork and said that this actually really helps them have a stronger cybersecurity posture, which minimizes a lot of headaches that some businesses do have who don't implement the same sort of procedure. Thank you for listening to this podcast with Darnley G. If you like our show and want to know more, like or subscribe our podcast. Remember, look both ways before crossing the information superhighway. Safe computing, everybody. Bye.